Test. Test. All right. This is a test of the sound. And this is a test of. Right. This is a test of the sound. Okay, that sounds good. Now let's see and if the image this works. This is a test of. Right. This is a test of the sound. Okay. Everything kind of works. Should not have any issues with that. <clears throat> Putting the test machine away, we are in fact online to analyze another great game, this time between Johannes Zuckertort and Joseph Blackburn played in London in 1883. I was really surprised that this mammoth book of the greatest games of chess ever played which is where this um, game is from. Uh, did not include any games by the legend Paul Morphy. Not really sure why. Um, he played a couple of good players in his life, although the best players of his time sort of shunned him. He lived in Louisiana, was far away. He didn't. Uh, not really sure why they didn't include it. Probably because most of his opponent meh, iffy games. If you enjoy um, the games of Paul Morthy, I really, really advise you to check out Agat Mater's chess channel. Um, I'll try to see if I can link that in the video description below. He has just started his Paul Morphy saga. So a lot of good Paul Morphy games in that um, saga, Agat Mater's chess channel I'm sure that if you found my channel then you probably already know his he's a, a YouTube legend Agat Mator keep it up you're doing great man I watch you almost every single day so keep up the good work um, right so today game between Zuckertort and Blackburn Zuckertort I, I'm reading I'm reading this in the book was really interesting kind of kind of guy he was born in Poland and then um, he went to Breslau University, which is in Germany nowadays, I think. And uh, they sort of kicked him out of the university because he was never in class. He was always playing chess. So the guy goes to university and rolls. And then after a while, university is like, nah, you're not, you're not going to be a doctor. Then, then get out. Um, that's sort of funny. Um, he built up his reputation by playing Anderson and he beat Anderson, the guy from our last games, um, in 1871 in a 5-2 in a match. And then he uh, lived in London for a while. What else is there to say about Zuckertort? 
Um, he was a professional player. Um, his triumphs were rewarded with a battle against Steinitz in New Orleans in 1886, which has been recognized as the first official world championship match. And then Steinitz won, and Steinitz um, became the first world champion in, in chess. Um, what's I thought it was interesting. I was in Prague with my father, who taught me the game of chess uh, when I was little, and we, uh, we we were in Prague, and Steinitz was from Prague, so I wanted to see his his house, um, because I like famous houses. When I went uh, when we were there, we were looking for the house of Steinitz, and uh, that part of the city. Um, was was the Jewish part of, of Prague in the 1800s, which was completely destroyed. And, um, of course, you know, Second World War stuff happened and uh, Holocaust and all the Jews were murdered, etc., mostly etc. The, the house of Steinitz was just destroyed and they've built the city of Prague on top of the old house so he couldn't find the house of Steinitz. Um, Steinitz, I think, is an interesting figure because he was born in a country that no longer exists. Um, I think he was Bohemian. You know, doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't exist anymore. That's why you find an interesting flag of Steinitz. Anyway, this is this is not about him. This is about Zukertort, who was Polish born. I'm assuming he was also Jewish. The um, the other guy is Blackburn. Blackburn was interesting. Um, he was for many years the leading English chess player as well as being one of the world's best. And he was very inspired by Paul Morphy's games. And um, he won the British Championship. And um, okay, brilliant, 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 etc. What's also interesting about Blackburn is that the tournament book of the Vienna 1873 chess tournament, they called him Der Schwarze Tod, or the Black Death, because he used to beat people with the black pieces. And uh, so, um, so that's funny. All right. Um, chess culture aside, I've looked it up again in the uh, big database that I bought. And Zukertort, Johannes Hermann, over here, the Polish guy, and Blackburn, the English guy. And it was an English opening, um, which is ironic because Zukertort is playing white. So he's playing an English guy, he plays the English opening. That's, that's funny, I find that funny. That's almost as funny as in the World Championship match against Caruana in New York. Was it against Caruana? No, it wasn't against Caruana. It was the World Championship match. Carlson played the Trumpowski attack. And, of course, it was funny because Trump was, you know, on his way to becoming president in the U.S. That, that now, who did he play? Was it Anand? Not sure. Karyakin. He played Karyakin. That was it. He played the Trumpowski, which he normally doesn't do. Okay, English opening. E6. E3. Zuckertort plays the early part of the game as a very innocuous way, allowing Black to reach a comfortable position in which no effort at all later on Richard Reddy was to develop a more potent hypermodern method of development against 1E6. Okay. So basically White is not doing all that much and Black is sort of Okay, and we reach move nine. And in this position, most pieces have been developed, and um, it's basically just a matter of connecting rooks. Which is what happens. This is what happens. Blackburn just connects rooks. 
and the annotators give it a question mark exclamation mark this move let's try to figure out why before we read it what's the problem here this just seems pretty logical to me actually just connecting rooks what's wrong with it maybe c5 was better just breaking and then putting your queen on c7 I think maybe this is an improvement is it an improvement and with the idea of putting your queen on this square and you have a nice battery also you're threatening just to open that C file and maybe create a little bit of tension along this maybe you can even open it completely I think maybe this is interesting can we get rid of the arrows does this the question is does this fail tactically I mean this is just this is just good yeah there's no there's no problem here you can even think about putting that knight on e4 and put your queen here I don't okay does it does this improvement justify this uh, inaccuracy marquee marquee what's wrong with this move is it is there something wrong with this move you're not losing any material I, I don't see it after some effective opening play black now starts to drift there are two basic pawn breaks for black namely c7 c5 there it is and e6 e5 both advances will lead to pawn exchanges and thus an opening of the position with queen e7 black connects his rooks and keeps his options open on which advance to make but forgets one vital factor this is the factor that we're missing at least i'm missing the generalization that in open positions bishops are better than knights for this reason black should take one move out to preserve his d square d6 bishop Okay, so the threat is this move. Because where are you going to put your bishops? Only after 9a6, black can safely continue with such moves. So you should play a6 first. Uh, in this position, you should play a6 first because once the position open up, you want to have the bishop there. And now you're blocking up this knight, which is no longer attacking that bishop ever. Okay. So prophylactic play was necessary here, according to the annotators. Okay, he doesn't do it. So immediately, knight b5, exclam. There we go. We're understanding this. Knight to e4 was played makes sense takes d6 c takes d6 opening up the c file knight attacks the knight just preserve it f3 kicking the knight knight takes d2 queen takes d2 and we have another diagram at the moment the position remains reasonably closed but without being really blocked up in effect it has the potential to become open And it is this situation which the bishops are waiting for. So basically what they're saying is a black position. You, you always want basically what the annotator says is you always want the bishop there because um, an open position favors the bishop there and black 
uh, sorry, uh, closed positions will eventually open up. So you always want to have the bishop pair because you can always open the position later and your bishops will be awesome. So this, this person who wrote this, this annotator, they really want the bishop pair, always, right? Okay, bishop pair is awesome. That's lesson number one. Okay, takes, takes, drops back, take the open file, e4. Blackburn has accepted a lifeless position. Rook a1, exclam. Okay, so Zuckertort. Zuckertort really wants to open this stuff up. Right? And if takes, takes. Don't take you push, and if you don't take you push, and there's, there's mating ideas here. Whoa, that's a really drunk queen. There's no mating ideas there. So a lot of arrows going back and forth. I mean, what I mean is this move, and if takes, takes, takes. That's no good. There's a bishop here. A really drunk bishop. But you want to open this file up? Put your queen here and checkmate? Nah, I don't see the plan. I don't see the plan. A lot of arrows. Basically, I'm trying to figure it out, but I'm not figuring it out. It's a deep move. It is a deep move. It's deep move like, like this that often separate good players from great players. Many people would have been very tempted to oppose the only open file with rook a c1. I agree. Makes sense. But this would have been an incorrect plan leading to only mass exchange of the major piece on the c file. It is true that white could still advance in the center later on, but with fewer pieces on the board, black's defensive tasks would be greatly eased. True. So, you're not fighting for the open file. You're just giving that away. And you're saying, my sender is better, which I'm not sure if that is true. But at least I want to keep the majors on the board and not exchange all of these pieces off along the C file because then it will be easier, easier for you to defend. And what is an interesting point, actually, to notice is that these bishops and assisted by the queen and assisted by the pawns th really take out all of these entry points. So, I mean, you can, you can double up on the bubble up all you want, all you want, but I can waste two moves. And, and you're still not coming in. See, these, these, these things are red. You're not coming in. I'll, I'll just take that rook off. Right? It's just not happening. It's just not happening. So. Uh, E4. Rook C7. Right. E4, rook a c8, you're, you're doubling, that's fine. I control that c file anyway with my pieces, that's okay. E6, move the knight. These pawns start to move. I wonder in this position why he didn't just, didn't just take it. Takes, 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 takes. Oh wait, that doesn't work now. Wait, I just, did I just miscount earlier? 
I just missed miscounted. Weird. Okay, now this makes sense. Ooh, weakening all the dark squares. F4, G6, Rook, E3, diagram. Yeah, at, at this point, I think you're just gonna swing the Rook over and, and put the other Rook somewhere here and just crush on the, on the light squares. Must be the plan, something like that. These are the types of attacks that I enjoy playing. Come on, next page, come on. We now begin to see for sure that Black's counterplay along the sea file is proving to be more apparent than real. Yeah, there is no counterplay there. We're controlling all the squares. Meanwhile, White's attack on the king's side builds up at his leisure behind the impressive pawn center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this bishop. That's it's not a good bishop. It's not doing anything. This bishop. That is pretty terrible bishop. This is uh, creating threats along these files. This bishop I don't like so much yet, but you're gonna play this. You're gonna you can put the bishop here and again. All these dark squares, extremely weak, and you don't have a dark squared bishop to do something, to do anything. So, I like uh, I like white. Let's see, oh, I'm sorry. Let's see what the kibitz says at this point. The kibitzer, ladies and gentlemen. Kibitzer says plus one in equal material. So you're a pawn up. And f5 is the strongest move in the position. Right. Just, you know, this make killing that killing this bishop. Right. Let's get rid of the kibitzer. F5. Despite the fact that this loses, it can hardly be criticized, especially... Yeah, it can be criticized. It's the best move in the position. Yeah. They don't give a lot of um, analysis, but they give knight g7, which is not a good move. And then g4. And just... You know, I'm just gonna crush you over the light squares and then the dark squares are, everything is weak. Queen H4 is given. You gotta do some. Queen G2, just, you know, protecting the pawn. And white methodically prepares the F5 advance. Yeah, you're just waiting. You're just waiting to do this and open everything up. And there's, there's really nothing you can do. You're still controlling all of these squares. All of these entry points are still taken. You don't really need the queen. There's really, really nothing. You still have the queen. You could put the queen here and you still, there still wouldn't be. I mean, then you can sack the exchange to get some activity in, but maybe threaten something here. Wait, that's not so clear maybe I don't know let's see that in action let's say we make a nothing move and then we do this and now we take take and what happens if we just sack the oh wait okay takes that doesn't even work does it takes takes you still have the queen there oh you're not allowed to take that way yeah this is okay this is this is a daydream all right e takes f6 en passant knight takes f5 knight e4 g takes f5 is not good i guess 
Bishop takes f5, sacrificing the piece, which is not a real sacrifice because it's pinned. You can't take it back. It's even worse. Knight, knight e4. Now knight e4. Yeah, you just exchange here. Here you just make everything, everything very, very liquid. Rook g three check, king h eight, d five check. With the bishop. I'm assuming e five. D six. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, it's losing. You're losing, you're losing, you're losing. This this is just horrible. You're losing a rook. You can take it. It's terrible. Okay. Funny. Okay, knight e4. We should take c4. This move takes. Feel like this is going to be a pretty slow, sh uh, pretty quick. Uh, there's not a lot of analysis given here. Rook c2. Yeah, now you can enter. Rook c2. Black bases all of his hopes on this move, which does not seem to give him a lot more counterplay than he perhaps deserves. In any case, the alternative 25 h6 g6 loses swiftly. All right, that's that's fun. This loses swiftly. And um I'll uh I'll, I'm going to get some tea and you can figure out why this loses swiftly. Wow. Okay, I'm assuming you all found the winning continuation here. It's uh, rook to g3. And then, you know, how do you defend this? It's it's not it's not easy to defend. I mean, uh, let's say queen e8 trying to hold on to this uh, to this pawn. Uh, queen, you get this. I mean, rook h7. Trying to get that queen away. Rook takes g6, check. There you go. King h8 has to be played. I mean, what else? See how do you mate here? Ha! D five check. It's very very funny. Again the same idea. And now you lure away the queen. That's that's clever.
Yeah. I mean, queen takes e5. I'm assuming this is just mate. So, you can't actually take that bishop. You can't take that bishop, can you? Yeah, or you can give up the queen. You can do it the other way around as well. You can do it this way with the same tactic. And you're not, you're not running away. Also funny. King eight. Okay, so what else can you do to defend after queen? After queen here, you can do king h seven. Here you can do this, but then d five apparently. D five. E five. If you, if you take, if you take, you get rook h3 check, king g8, check, rook h8, it's mate, indeed, that is a mate in one, so, In this position, that move d5, e5. Keep keep blocking this. Otherwise, it's the mate with the bishop and the rook. d6. Again, the fork is in the position. And I mean, yeah. Rook d7, apparently. Haha, -ha, okay, so if takes, then the rook enters. But you can give a check first and then take the queen, right? This doesn't work. This is just check. And here, just take the queen. So that can't be right. Anyway, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. He's banking on this move to work. <clears throat> this comes with check. Using the pawn as a shield. But now you get the check again. D5, E5. Suddenly it seems as if black has dealt with the threats and white is left facing the loss of a piece. Either the bishop or the queen, probably the bishop. But you can wait. Take with J let's try to figure it out. There must be a there must be a fantastic move here. What is the fantastic move? Well, I didn't find it. It was queen b4. I would have never, I would have, wouldn't have played this. Would you have? Takes. I'm assuming check. This is. Wow, 
Why am I not allowed to go here? Oh, wait, there's a pawn here. Haha. -ha. No, that's incorrect. This move is the correct move. Mm, although, no. Yeah, maybe it is. No. <laughs> there should be a way easier. Yeah, there should be. <laughs> there should be a way, way, way easier way to do this. I mean, I'm, I'm just horsing around at this point. There is, there is, there's such an easy mate here that I'm just blind. Against which there is no defense. Let's just see what happens if it takes, takes, king up. This comes with check, but it leads to, at least the way I did it, doesn't lead to anything. What am I missing here? Come on, give it, sir. This is, I'm tired. I'm, I'm... Made in six. So h3, rook h3 check. King g6. Check, king g7, rook g3 check, king h7, rook f7 check, and you win a bishop if you want, king h6, bishop f4 check, yeah, now you have to go to to this square, and now it's just checkmate. There you go. That was the mate. Okay, so you can't take it. You can't take it because you're mated in this fashion. Right? And now we've seen the variation that leads to... Uh, Leads to the mate where you go and you rick, rick a roof cut, okay? So he did something else. He did this, he blocks it. Now still I wonder, how do you win? And this is mate in nine. So this is mate in is this mate? It's not announcing mate, it's announcing it's a fantastic move. And there is absolutely no way that black survives. And once we reach levels of plus 64, it's an, it should be announcing mate, yeah? Plus 65. If I give it one extra CPU, it will announce mate. If I give it a little bit more time, mate in 18, there it is. That is just amazing. Okay. Okay, so taking, of course, is uh, the wrong idea. You did this, which is mate in nine. You take an e4. And you can take the bishop if you want, but rook f now. You sack a rook. Yeah, obviously, if queen takes, then there's a check. And it's made in six. Yeah.
Here you just have to give the queen, but still. Now don't take the queen. Rather give a check. King g6. Queen e6. Now you can take the queen. g7. Rook g3 apparently. If you take with the queen, rook g3, you don't even take the queen. Yeah, I'm, I, I would play this instantly. I wouldn't even think about it. But there is a cleaner way to win if you do this. Check. Queen g6. Basically, there's nothing, nothing left to do. And now you take with the check. King h8. So you sack the rook, and obviously, you know, if you do this, then oh, wait, that's not even allowed. If you do this, then uh, you make a new queen, and it's checkmate. I have promote to a queen always on, and I'm assuming that occasionally I want to promote to a knight, but haven't haven't come across that so far. All right, this there's no no defense after you. Okay, so you can't take the bishop. You can't take the bishop. And here it's just amazing how it's with best possible play made in nineteen. Mate in 17, apparently. Yeah. Rook takes b2. You should take... You should take b2 here and give up the rook. This is what he should have done. Now you take with check. Now you play e5. Okay. How did the game end? The game ended with d5, e5, queen here, rook this move. And now, of course, now, of course, he, how did the game end? He took e4, he took e4. Wait, he sacked the rook. Right, he sacked the rook. King takes King takes h7. Queen takes e4 check. King ran. Check. King took the rook. Check. King over there. Took the queen. And this is where you resign. Because, you know, there's no defense anymore. Okay. Cool. Lessons from this game. Look out for sneaky knight moves. Lesson I take from this game is that if you're an annotator of chess books, you're, you're saying the bishop bear is the best because in open positions, the bishop bear is better than the knight. And a closed position will eventually turn into an open position. So bishops are the best. Grandmasters dig, dig on bishops a lot. Right? Look out for sneaky knight moves. Yeah, don't don't allow the trade for the the knight versus the bishop. It's very easy to overlook annoying ones, like knight b five, which secured the advantage of the two bishops. So that was that was why we gave this one the the mistake idea, and he should have played this in order to prevent that. So he should have been more prophylactic. Okay. Open files should be studied carefully. Sometimes they are the most important feature of the position. However, in this position, that open file accounts for nothing because once again, these bishops are just fantastic. So yeah, we open it up. This does nothing because of the 
entry points. There are no entry points along this open file, so they should be studied carefully. Sometimes they're the most important feature of the position. In this game, however, the open C file was virtually irrelevant. And that's actually a good point. Um, that's, that's why we should like this move. Because this move, this move is saying, I don't care about the C file. Don't care about it. We control the entry points. You get, you can have it. It's irrelevant. A queen sacrifice based on a forced checkmate in seven moves is a pleasing way to end the game. Yeah, that was that was uh, in wait in wait in this position somewhere. Check. King there in this position here yes yes you can sack the queen because if you accept it it doesn't work because of the uh, line with the rooks that I couldn't find because I'm not very good at chess at all okay so a bit of a quick quicker analysis than the other ones if I'm not mistaken but I hope you liked it anyway, and um, meh. see you next time for another great game. The next game we'll look at is one of the first world champion of chess, Mr. Steinitz, and he's playing Mr. Shigorin in 1892. So we're slowly creeping up on that 20th century. And it was a world championship match, and it was game four in Havana. So if you want to have a look at that before then uh, you know what to do. All right, I had fun. I hope you did too, do in the future or in the past. If you're watching this yesterday, no, wait, that's not possible because today is now. If you are watching this from a future standpoint, but not today, but then yesterday, like if you're rewatching this in three days and you've watched it two days from now, then that's also okay.